Hey friends, it's Cherie, and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you some things that I recently picked up, also a little sewing chit chat, but first, if you're new to my channel, welcome, and if you're a returning person, thank you so much for your continued support. All right, let's get into it. last month I picked up some things and I can't wait to share them with you. My birthday was in November and I picked up a couple of things over my birthday and also Thanksgiving that I haven't had an opportunity to show you here on YouTube. Before we get into all those things, friends, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. I work really hard to bring you these videos and it means so very much to me when you give me a thumbs up and let me know that I'm doing all right. So please do that. If you've come to my channel several times before or even just once before and you enjoyed what you saw, subscribe to my channel. I've noticed that my viewership has gone down in these last couple months and I know it's because I took a break from YouTube, but if I am wrong and that it's not just because I took a break and there's some additional content that you'd like to see on my channel, please let me know in the comment section below. All right, let's get into the things that I've been picking up, okay? The very first thing that I want to share with you is that I picked up three more paper cut patterns and I'm so excited about them. They're patterns that have been on my wish list for quite a while and I finally got my hands on them and I cannot wait to share them with you. There was a really great sale on their website where they offered 40% off of their patterns and I jumped on it, friends. If you like paper cut patterns and you're not subscribed to their email list, get on there because you'll learn about all the really cool sales. And as I mentioned in a previous video, if you purchase these at your local sewing store and you're in California or in the US, these patterns retail for $28. Because I believe they're in New Zealand, their money exchange rate is different from the US. They end up being cheaper when you order them from their website. And then when they go on sale, friends, what are we doing? You have to save the money. I got three patterns for like 40 bucks and normally one of them costs $28. So definitely check them out. The patterns that I picked up have been on my wish list for quite a while, but I just couldn't pull the trigger on them. Now, the very first pattern I got is the Tula Pants, and I've been wanting this for a while, guys. I love this pattern because not only does it give you an option to do a woven pant, but it also gives you the option to do joggers and shorts. So if you can see that, you get all these different options out of this one pattern, and I really am obsessed with the look of the joggers, okay? So I definitely wanna make the joggers. The pants look so great and they are not your typical joggers that make your ankles cold, okay? They actually touch the top of her shoes and I'm really hoping that they fit me that way as well. And I also picked up the solar tee to pair with those joggers. And this is what the pattern looks like, but there is an option to do a long sleeve and you can make a version that doesn't have the sleeve ruffle. So I'm so excited to have both of these patterns in my stash. Now, you can make that a t-shirt or a sweatshirt or a sweater. So you can use lots of different knit fabrics for this particular top. And I think between the two of these, I can come up with several different really great looks and I'm happy to have these. Now the last one, I had a hard time purchasing it over the years just because it's so simple and basic. I didn't understand why on earth it should cost $28 for this pattern. But I wanna say it's called the Array Top and it's a top dress. So you can do either a top or a dress. It's a very basic beginner friendly type of pattern. And like, I'll show you what it looks like. So this is the long sleeve version of the top. These are the line drawings. And it is so basic, you guys. It doesn't make any sense. There's no buttons. There's no zipper. <laughs> I don't understand why this pattern costs so much money, guys, okay? But because it was on sale, I picked it up and you have an option to make a belt sash tie or you can do elastic at the wrists or at the waist if you're making the sweater or the shirt version. The fabrics suggested for this are woven or knit, which is another reason why I like this pattern, just like 
the other two patterns, you can make it out of different types of fabric. And that makes me very happy when I can try something in different fabrics without it compromising the design. So I'm excited to give this a try. Happy I finally got it. And those were the first things that I got. I do want to mention that all of my patterns I'm sharing today were all purchased on sale. Okay, so the next set of patterns I wanna share with you are patterns that I got the day after Thanksgiving during the 199 cent sale for Simplicity. I was highly disappointed though when I got there and realized that the new Simplicity patterns were not in stock. And I really wanted to get that new Mimi G pattern that came out and so I was a little disappointed I couldn't pick that up but let me show you the ones that I did pick up recently my kids have been hounding me to make them more Christmas jammies okay now I already had plans to make them Christmas jammies using a pattern I had in my stash but that pattern is for woven fabric but they love wearing both knit and woven fabric pajamas so I also have here simplicity s9455 and it is a family pajama set now my husband refuses to wear the jammies that i made him in the past so he will not be getting custom jammies ever again okay he doesn't like to wear jammies but i love jammies my kids love jammies so at some point i'm going to make us matching jammies using this pattern and the cool thing about it is that it has this really great henley button placket on the front of the pajama top and the pajama bottoms have pockets so i really like that for myself I'm not so much for the kids because, you know, let's face it, they're gonna use them, they're gonna stick things in there and I'm gonna have to remember to pull out before I wash them, but that's all right, okay? Um, I think it's a very beautiful design and just look at this family, they look so cute. Don't they look so cute? A nice blended family photo. Anyway, love the different options for this guy and we're gonna use this pattern to death, I can already tell. The next pattern is one that I picked up because Talisha made me do it, okay? I blame you, Talisha, okay? She made this dress and it looked so good on her that I absolutely have to have one. I have to have one, okay? <laughs> it's Simplicity S9644. And there is a long version, which I'd probably make, and then there's a shorter version. What's cool about this dress is it has this sexy little peekaboo here. Just gives a little bit of skin, not too much skin, you know? And I like how it kind of bells out. The shorter version looks like it's more voluminous in the body than the long version, but they're both very gorgeous. And it also has an option to do it without the cutout. And I can absolutely see myself doing that for work and as a shorter version. So I love all views of this pattern. I can see myself making all views. And one thing I want to note too is that the difference between A and B is not only is this shorter, but it has a smaller peekaboo than the longer version of the dress because you can tell more in the drawing than you can here, but it has a smaller peekaboo. So um, anyway, just something to note. But she made this and it was so cute. And so now I feel like I have to have one. <laughs> and this is what happens when you have sewing friends that you just, you wanna be like, you know what I mean? Like my girl looks so cute, you know what I mean? Anyway. Um, you can make this out of lightweight ponte, textured knit, stretch velvet, um, and just jerseys. So it's a really great pattern and I can't wait to make this. Fun fact, my husband and I, our very first date in college, and if he could hear me saying this, he would say red shirt. <laughs> because our very first date, I wore a shirt that had the same type of cutout, but it stopped here and it was from BCBG. And I remember it had like rice, rhinestone BCBG on the sleeve. Anyway, um, he loved that peekaboo that was on that top. It looked almost identical to the top part of this dress. So if I make this out of red, he might lose his mind, guys. He might really like lose his mind because he'll be like, you know those cartoons where like the eyes just woo, woo. <laughs> I think he might do that if I actually made that because it'll remind him of that shirt that he loved so much back when we were in college. Anyway, I'm gonna make this, it's great. The next one that I picked up is Simplicity S9375. I saw this skirt a couple of times on different people's pattern hauls, and I thought to myself, that's very cute, but I don't know how I feel about the tie in the front. Well, the not tie in the front. Now it's grown on me and I think it's very cute. And at first I thought I might do it out of a faux leather, but I think it would be best suited for maybe a brushed cotton. And this particular one comes in three different length options. This can be made out of chambray, cotton blends, crepe, flannel, soft linen blends, uh, stretch wovens, tropical wools, 
So those are the options. I'm sure you can make it out of other things that I didn't list as well, but these are the different lengths of the skirt and I think it's very cute. Um, so yeah, we'll give that a try. Um, the next thing that I got is a sweatsuit pattern that comes with lots of different options. I wanna say this came out last year. Simplicity S9379. I am very much in the cozy mood, especially as it pertains to work. And like, we just had some rainy days where we were stuck in the house and nothing feels better on my body than sweats, okay? <laughs> cozy, fleecy, soft sweats, okay? So anyways, I have some fabrics to choose from in my stash. I definitely love the way this looks on this girl. If you can take a look. It's, the hood is rather unique looking, um, so hopefully I'll be able to create a neat, fun look with that. Um, I love the relaxed fit of the pants. There is no cuff on the ankle, which I think is really nice as well. Um, I also like that I could possibly make this out of a knit fabric that is not sweatshirt fleece, maybe even a double knit or a jersey fabric. Love this pattern. I don't know that I would make necessarily this little version here. It's a bit cropped for me and definitely too cropped for my husband. But I definitely like this pattern. And I saw it last year and passed on it. And now I'm like, why? I really like this pattern. So anyway, I got this one. You can't, oh, I said that they didn't have the elastic, I didn't have cuffs at the bottom of the pants, but you do have the option to add elastic in the ankles um, as an option. So that's cool. The next pattern is one that I already had in my stash. Talisha actually picked this pattern up for me and she purchased me the one that the biggest size was a size 12 and I sewed that up and I'll be sharing pictures of that soon. I love it. It's very comfortable. It's very cute. Um, but I wish it was bigger. So I actually picked up another one. And this one I'll make in a size 16 instead of the 12. The 12 fit me really nicely as an oversized shirt, but I want it to be more like how it fits on Mimi where it's like loose and, you know, roomy. Um, so I'm definitely going to make it again because it was an enjoyable sew. If you're new to sewing, this is a pretty easy pattern to give a try. Um, and also the, the hood is not lined, so you could definitely get away with um, making a basic hood. And it's only two pieces, whereas a lot of hoods are three pieces, and then if they're lined, that's six pieces. So just something to consider. It's a really good, easy to sew pattern, and there is a sew along, although I did not follow that sew along. Um, and I made this basic version here. I didn't make the one with the hip cut out, but I think in my next version, I make might make the hip cut out. So this is another pattern that I picked up. Now, lastly, I shared this in a pattern haul before. My weight is fluctuating drastically. So I picked this pattern up again. This is Simplicity S9647. And the reason why I got this one is because the size is from 14 to 22. And I think I'll be able to grade the waist hip size and be able to fit myself a bit better than using the version that I have. I'm anxious about cutting the fabric and then the waistband being too tight. So I picked it up again because it was $1.99 and I can't wait to sew this up. Those are all the patterns that I picked up. Let's move on to tools. The two tools that I picked up, guys, are necessary in my sewing stash. I actually already had this tool and had been using it for over a year, maybe even two years. It is a hot hem ruler. I really enjoy this pack from Amazon because it comes with different sizes and I'll show them to you if they're easy to access. However, one I lost and then the others, the other one broke and I was so upset because I use it so often. So this one I lost, so I'll be replacing this one. But this one, I was making some really cool pants over the weekend and it snapped in half and became very annoying to work with because it wasn't long enough. So I immediately placed another order. This was like 12 or $13 on Amazon. Um, and I know someone had mentioned on my channel when I first shared the first one that I bought that they didn't like these kind because it melted. Mine never melted, guys. And I use this with steam and everything. I'll insert a link to this one um, from Amazon so you can get one yourself. But it mine never melted, but over time, I think it wore down because it, like I said, it cracked right down the middle and just snapped in two while I was using it and I was really upset. Now, because of that experience, I found this Clover one. It's another hot ruler, but this one is made out of a fabric. So this one would avoid the whole snapping and breaking. 
Um, also, I'm imagining, so that one, the one that broke, heats up really hot. So if you touch it after you've steamed on a spot that you know caught the steam, you will burn your finger. This one right here, I don't think that you'll have that issue with uh, because it is a fabric. I don't know what kind of fabric it is, but it is a fabric. So I don't think you'll have that issue of it breaking. So I'm excited to give this a try. Hopefully it works out good. If you haven't seen these before, like I said, I'll link them below in the information section. All right, let's get into the fabrics that I picked up the day after Thanksgiving. They were on crazy sale and I was so excited to not only take advantage of the sale, but also to use my coupons and I had some rewards saved up that I could use. So anyways, this is the first cut. It is only a yard of fabric and it is a faux leather. There is no stretch to this guy at all. It does have a soft backing that is, you know, gonna be nice on the skin and it's beautiful. I love it so much. I definitely want a long skirt. It's either going to be a zip back or it's going to be, I can't remember the pattern number that I sewed, but I've sewn two denim skirts using a McCall pattern. It could be that. So it'll have the look of a denim skirt with the pockets and everything but it'll be out of this faux leather. I think that'll be so gorgeous. I love this color and I think it will go with so many different things and I cannot wait to make this up. I really enjoyed making that skirt, which is why I made two of them. Now this time around, it'll be out of this buttery soft faux, faux leather and I cannot wait to wear it. The next fabric, I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do with and I'm hoping you guys can give me your input on what I should do with it, but I was trying to find fabric for a moto jacket and I found this online and when I went to the store, it ended up being super thin. So this is a faux suede fabric. It's really gorgeous, really soft to the touch. On one side, it's the faux suede and on the other side, it's satin. Really nice. Perfect probably for a dress of some kind, but what dress, I can't decide. I have so many patterns and none of them scream faux suede in my opinion. So I thought about maybe using my uh, paper cut pattern jumpsuit pattern I recently sh showed, but then I stopped myself because I have a corduroy overalls cut and ready to be sewn. Do I need two overall jumpsuit, you know, romper-ish situations? I don't think so. So maybe not that. I don't know what to make out of this, guys, but look at it, it's really pretty. My Auntie Ruby said that it might be nice for a jacket lining, and that's a thought, but it's faux suede, guys. Don't we wanna show off the faux suede? <laughs> I don't know, I might take her advice and make this a lining to a jacket, but what do you guys think? What would you make out of this gorgeous red fabric? Would you make a dress? Would you make a shirt? Would you use this as lining? What would you do? It's definitely too thin for a jacket like it was originally intended to be for. I kind of wanted like the, the feel of a Michael Jackson thriller jacket, but when this came and it was so thin, I was like, mm, darn it, okay? So, but I wanna use it because it's pretty. So what do you guys think? What should I make out of it? Let me know. The next fabric is probably one of my favorite fabrics I've ever purchased. Although I haven't sewn it yet. It might sew terribly, Lord, please don't let it sew terribly, but it might. Um, this gorgeous faux suede Ponty. Yeah, you heard me right, friends. This is a faux suede Ponty, which means it's stretchy, not too, too stretchy, but it's stretchy. And on the back, it has that spongy feel of a really nice Ponty but the front is faux suede. This will be a rocking jacket, guys. I, I, I cannot wait. It is so nice. You could make so many cool jackets out of this fabric. You could make a really nice cardigan out of this fabric, guys. I mean, look at this. It's so, uh, so good. It was on sale. I got to use my coupon. I was so thrilled, <sighs> quite, Possibly one of my favorite fabrics I've purchased this year. That's saying a lot guys because you know I like to buy all the fabrics But yeah, this one right here is going to be a favorite. I'm gonna be scared to cut it I'm not gonna lie, but it's happening. So get ready <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, I got tired of sending my husband to the hardware store to get my scissors sharpened because sometimes I would give them to him and it would take a while for them to get back to me or he just wasn't going and I really needed them done. So I had to do it myself and that sucks. So I saw 
the Fisker sharpen scissor blade uh, little thing and I picked it up. It was like 60% off, so I paid $7 for it, which is an amazing deal, and it sharpens the scissors. So I don't have to send them off. Hopefully it works good. I have three pairs of Fisker scissors in my stash, um, all of which need to be sharpened. So I'm really hoping this works out good. Those are all the things that I picked up. Now let's talk about the advice that I need. Friends, I was sewing the most perfect Ponty project when I decided to sew on the wrong side of the fabric, not the right side, after I had been sewing on the right side the entire project, and the back of the Ponty fabric melted on my really nice professional seamstress iron. Do you see this? I can't get it off. I've been trying to get this stuff off of my beautiful iron that I got for Christmas last year. I can't get it off, and I'm starting to get really sad about it, so, how do I get this off? Has this happened to you before? Have you ever melted fabric on your iron? And if so, how did you get it off? I've tried some of the Google options, our suggestions, and I'll tell you what, they ruined an iron that we already had. So I don't wanna go down that rabbit hole. I wanna go to you, my trusted YouTube friends, for some awesome advice. How do I remove this from my iron? Let me know. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and head over to my other videos where I'm sharing our Elevate with Ankara series with Talisha of Creativity by T. Check those out. Check out our interview with CJ of House of Mommy Wata. That's a really good video you should watch. But anyway, thank you so much. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below if you have any of the things that I picked up or have tried any of the things that I picked up and also give me advice about my iron. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon. Bye.